And this is the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame show. And after almost 54 minutes of nothing much to write home about, the Rangers script a stirring story with a shocking final chapter. Three goals in less than three and a half minutes. They turn 2-0 down into 3-2 up, and they leave Canada with a perfect 4-0 road trip. Hi, everyone. Welcome inside the Delta MSG studios. John Giannone alongside Steve Valiquette. Maybe around game 50 of this year, they'll look back at game five and they'll say, well, game six and say, what, what just transpired? How did we pull two points out of that one? They were on their way to an immature loss. And those typically happen after games where you empty the tank, as the Rangers did in Nashville on Thursday. Sometimes young teams can take a step back because they think it's going to be a little bit easier. They're going to just ease themselves into an afternoon game in Ottawa. And Ottawa is a lesser team, and that's where teams make immature mistakes. But luckily, thankfully, fortunate for, whatever you want to call it, uh, this team grabbed themselves. They, they, somebody stepped up and woke everybody up, and they went out and they were fierce in the final 10. They weren't going to go down like this. And look, I watch a lot of hockey. Toronto Maple Leafs usually lose that type of game. They beat all the good teams and then they lose against the lesser teams. I was really hoping that wasn't going to be the storyline after this game. But now you're talking about a Ranger team that can continue with that build that they have and now come home and be ready for the next opponent on Monday, which is Calgary. The story for so much of the game was the fact that the Rangers had few shots on goal, few shot attempts, and a whole lot of hits. And a lot of times that goes hand in hand. But then with about five and a half minutes left, the Rangers finally were able to get a puck past Matt Murray. And did that ever serve as a snowball, that first goal from Chris Kreider? Well, they kept surging after that. And it's nice to see that it is Kreider. It's one of your leadership guys and leadership groups said, you know what, and look, we say it all the time in hockey, your best players have to step up in big moments. And if there was something that was going to happen in this game, it was going to be Kreider in front. He was there most of the afternoon, and he's parked there right in front of Murray, and he gets that to go. And, you know, that just builds because everybody's saying, all right, look, that's one. All we need is one more to get right back in this thing and push this thing into the extra period. It certainly doesn't go that far, but I got to say, this is a, a real gut check. For the last 10 minutes there, this team really came together, and it's something just to keep moving forward with that momentum. So on that Chris Kreider goal, Matt Murray went down, took a while getting up, got up, and actually left the ice. That meant Anton Forsberg had to come in the game. And the thought process, obviously, at that point is just get pucks on him. Make him work. He hasn't seen a puck in, in a couple of days. Just get him in at that, posi at that point in the game. Keep the puck in the zone and then get pucks to him. A minute 15 later... Ryan Lindgren from the exact same <laughs> spot where Chris Kreider was, first of all, how, and second of all, wow. Yeah, exactly. Uh, look, I, and look, here's the thing, too. I thought it was going to be Gustafson coming off the bench because they're carrying three goalies right now. Forsberg, to me, is the number three, even though he's had some nice moments early on in the season. When I saw it was Forsberg and not Gustafson, I was, I was saying to myself, geez, this is a great break for the Rangers. They're getting the third string goalie. Now, it's never easy when you're sitting on the bench that long. You're coming in in the last five minutes. You've just been marinating for 55 minutes and you see the play on Fox though I mean again he has one of those are you kidding me moments coming out of the foxhole and Lindgren of all people is net front now all three goals for the Rangers are right on the doorstep and it's really hard to imagine that that's the guy to be down there when your other defenseman's down there. That means all three forwards are up top, and uh, it's a pretty wild moment because who would expect Fox to Lindgren but those two guys? Can you imagine the laugh they had about that mm -hmm. afterwards? I mean, they're thrilled. And will continue to. So that tied the game. Ryan Lindgren's first goal in 13, dating back to late last season. Before that, he had gone 50 or more without a goal. So that ties it up. Now 2.05 later, with 2.03 remaining, the Rangers do a great job with that line, and that includes includes Sammy Blay of keeping the puck in the zone and Barkley Goudreau from the exact same spot where Ryan Lindgren scored and where Chris Kreider scored put the Rangers ahead. Yeah, and, and it had a lot of people fooled because we're so used to seeing Kreider's 20 there and when it's Goudreau's 21 we expect to get that call as familiar as it is to all of us that it's Kreider. But when you're talking about Goudreau, these are the moments that you expect him to come through. This is why he's the playoff performer. He loves the big moment. I've heard it from everybody, the character on this guy. And, of course, he's the guy in, on this afternoon to be the, the one in front of the net to end it. Third goal right from in front, and he was all over the ice. He had a really nice afternoon. The Rangers did have their chances. Uh, even though there was only 12 shots on goal after the second period for the Rangers, they still had their chances in this game, and it's just nice to see the group stick with it.
And there was steam coming out of the ears of the Ottawa Senators fans and probably the players as well. And not so much because of the way this whole thing transpired. But let's not forget this. After the Rangers made it 2-1, 30 seconds before they make it 2-2, there's a penalty called on Jacob Truba, and rightfully so for getting the stick in the legs of Tim Stutzla. Stutzla was called for an embellishment there. So that wiped out a power play that would have at least taken two minutes off the clock and instead made it 4-on-4 four four where the Rangers scored. Steve, your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are this, right? So Stutzla, that would have been the fourth penalty that he drew in this afternoon. He had one on Kreider for holding, Barron for kneeing, mm -hmm. Miller for holding, and this Truba tripping was the embellishment call that he deserved from the earlier penalty in, in the game, which was the Barron one. Right. So uh, here's the thing. If you think you are not going to get a bad reputation in this league from the referees and you're going to make a fool out of them by diving, you're sorely mistaken. I think Stutzla learns a lesson here. It cost his team two points. But you know what? Don't play that way. And kids, don't, don't dive. It's, it's actually my biggest pet peeve in the game. Right? It's, it's my biggest pet peeve in the game. You're embarrassing the referees, you're embarrassing yourself, and it's disrespectful to the game. But that's what you get. You lose your two points because of it, and hopefully he learns a lesson. You must love soccer. Uh, hey. uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, soccer fans, but it drives me bananas.